Welcome to episode three of Upgrade My PC Please. If you missed the previous episode or the video explaining what the series is all about, then be sure to check those out. I'll provide the links in the video description. So once again, in last week's episode, we have five PCs all in need of various upgrades. These were older potato type PCs and the viewers voted Braden's Oldie McOld the most worthy of receiving the proposed upgrades. Unlike the first episode, last week's was a bit of a landslide with you guys heavily voting for Oldie McOld. So congratulations to Braden for winning the $500 US upgrade package. The good news of course being that the four runners up will all be receiving a copy of Rainbow Six Siege thanks to Ubisoft. Big thanks to Ubisoft for supporting the series and providing our contestants with free games. This week I'll be ordering Braden's new parts from PC Case Gear and getting them posted out to him. PC Case Gear put their hand up right away to support the series and offer free shipping for all Australian based contestants, so a big thank you to them also. Once installed we'll have Braden send us some updated photos of the refurbished rig and then I'll show them off to you guys as a special feature at the start of Season 2. Also, don't forget to vote each week as that will put you in the running to win some cool prizes and that is of course a global giveaway. Last week ET3D from Israel won a Seagate Barracuda 4TB hard drive. This week we have another very cool prize on offer, I'll announce that a bit later in the video, but it may or may not be a Ryzen 5 1600 CPU. <laughs> Alright, once again we have 5 PCs all in need of various upgrades, let's go check them out. First up we have an old Sandy Bridge Core i5 PC from Aki which has been named Akatsuki. I hope I said that right. Anyway, it was built back in 2011 with just 4 gigabytes of RAM and the pokey little GeForce GT430. Since then a few difficult upgrades have been made. Aki received the GeForce GTX 480 as a hand-me-down from a relative, so that was a decent step up from the GT430. However, the Fermi-based graphics card is physically quite long. As a result, the hacksaw came out and the 3.5-inch drive bay got the chop. So with a bit of violence, that problem was solved quite quickly. The next problem, as many of you know, Fermi is a hot item, and with limited case cooling, Aki had to whack in a 120mm fan on the side of the case to feed in some fresh air. The GTX 480 also slayed the old power supply, so to solve that issue, the EVGA Supernova 750G2 was dropped in. I'd normally say that's extreme overkill, but then we are talking about a GTX 480 after all. Upgrading the memory was no easy task either as it was discovered that the second DIMM slot on the H61 motherboard ended up being dead so Aki had to sell the 4GB sticks and buy a single 8GB module for single channel operation. As a student, Aki uses the PC for projects, but like most of us, also enjoys the odd game. Apparently stuttering is a serious problem for titles such as Just Cause 3 and Resident Evil 7 using low to medium quality settings, so let's see what we can do about that. Since we are dealing with a locked Core i5 CPU here, a platform upgrade really is in order. Therefore, I'm going to propose the Ryzen 5 1400 on a Gigabyte B350 motherboard with 8 gigabytes of memory. This leaves us with enough cash to buy either a new SSD or a case. Sadly though, there isn't enough money left over to get something like a GTX 1050, so we'll have to stick with that GTX 480 for now. Aki can tackle that at a later date. For me, the case really is a sad affair and I can't imagine putting any new hardware into that thing, so I've picked out the Fractal Design Focus Mini G. This is a smart combo that will not just look great, but it'll also work very well. Next up, what is old mate up to? Just waiting for his games to load by the looks of it. Ray's dream is to up his game in 2017 with a more powerful gaming rig. The system you see here, just below me here, was built by Ray with the help of build guides over on the Whirlpool forums. And its only purpose in life is to game. Ray enjoys playing titles such as CSGO, Dota 2 and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. Right now powering the rig is the Core i5-750 which has been overclocked to 3.4 GHz but due to inadequate case cooling has to be clocked back down to the stock speeds during summer or the system crashes. The Thermaltake V9 has a massive top mounted 230mm exhaust fan and unfortunately that's dead while the 120mm fan in the rear is also dead. Handling the rendering work is the GeForce GTX 960 4GB version which is still decent while the operating system is installed on the Kingston V300 240GB SSD so we're pretty good there as well. 
So really we are looking at a platform upgrade here and the Ryzen 5 1400 again makes the most sense on our budget. We'll throw the Ryzen CPU on a standard ATX motherboard from ASRock featuring the B350 chipset along with 8GB of DDR4 memory. Since Ray has a nice SSD, power supply and decent graphics card, I've decided to solve the case cooling issue by doing away with the old Thermaltake V9 and replacing it with something a little more swanky looking in the Fantex Eclipse P400S. Now Ray's PC won't just run cool, it'll look cool as well, and we know how important that is for a gaming rig. Get some RGBs in there and all your 2017 hopes and dreams will have become a reality. This unassuming looking gaming rig started life as a pre-built HP back in 2013, but has since been upgraded from the original Radeon HD 7570 graphics card and 8GB memory capacity. It also came with a hard drive as the boot device, but that has since been demoted to secondary storage status when Carson popped in the Crucial MX100. In fact, that's the system's most recent upgrade. Before that, in 2015, the graphics card was upgraded to the very popular GeForce GTX 970 and another 8GB of RAM was added. Admittedly today it is a reasonably respectable gaming system if I'm honest, but even so Carson is chasing better frame rates and titles such as World of Warcraft, Rust and Gary's Mod. Apparently right now Rust is only played on low to medium quality settings and there the frame rates aren't great, so the hope is to not just improve frame rates but also the visual quality settings. So at the heart of the system we have the Core i5-3570K clocked at 4.2GHz which in my opinion, it's quite a mild overclock, especially with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Even so, at that frequency, the Ivy Bridge Quad Core is still an exceptionally good gaming CPU, and with our $500 US budget, there really isn't anything else we could afford that would be a worthwhile upgrade. Since the system does have a good size SSD, decent power supply, and plenty of RAM, the weakness here really is the graphics card and possibly the old HP case. Something like the GeForce GTX 1060 will only really provide a minor bump in frame rate. What we really need here is something like a GTX 1070 for the upgrade to be worthwhile, so I suggest the Zotac GTX 1070 Mini. This then leaves us enough money left over to get us a nice case, something with better thermal performance, so I suggest the Fractal Design Focus G. It's a nice looking affordable case that comes with a pair of front mounted 120mm fans. Next up we have Captain Kitten and two years ago this was a sad old AMD FX 6300 system rocking an EVGA GTX 460 graphics card. Today the FX CPU has been ditched for a Haswell based Core i5 4670K. Nice choice there Rob. Meanwhile the GTX 460 was swapped out for the Radeon R9 270X. The system is built inside the impressive looking Fantex Eclipse P400 and powering everything is the Corsair C600. With the Cooler Master Hyper T4, Rob really should be able to get a solid overclock out of the Core i5-4670K. And as it stands, short of picking up an unlocked Core i7, there really isn't much room for improvement here. Basically, what Rob wants is quicker boot up and game load times, and he hopes to upgrade to a 1080p monitor in the near future, so he's seeking a more powerful graphics card, as well as an SSD. Right now he's enjoying games such as GTA 5, Battlefield 4, Skyrim, but he also dabbles with Adobe Photoshop. So to fix the boot times and solve that issue of the random mismatch of laptop hard drives, I suggest the Crucial MX300 525GB 2.5 inch SSD. Then to spruce up the rendering performance, let's go with the GeForce GTX 1060 60GB graphics card. If Rob hasn't already, I suggest overclocking the 4670K, and once he gets a new monitor, the GTX 1060 60GB will be fully unleashed. Last, but certainly not least, we have another Core i5 4670 powered gaming rig, this time from Australia. Jaden's ye old PC is actually quite respectable, but of course we have a $500 US budget here and that translates into around $600 Aussie, and for that we can make a number of upgrades. Jaden loves to game and from 2005 to 2013 he was a proud member of the PC Master Race. Then in late 2013, I guess he must have hit his head or something because he decided to get an Xbox One rather than upgrade his PC. Ah, oh, Jaden, the shame. What were you thinking, mate? Anyway, thankfully before too long, the concussion must have worn off and Jaden quickly became unimpressed with the performance of his Xbox and therefore began planning his PC comeback. Good on you, mate. 
Anyway, in early 2014, Jaden did get his life back on track, or at least his gaming life, as he built the PC you see here. Today, the PC is used to store his music library, act as a Plex server for movies and TV shows, and of course, play games such as PUBG, Battlefield 1, and Doom. The main issue here is that GeForce GTX 760 graphics card. Apart from being very slow in today's games, Jaden says it's also starting to artifact quite a bit. He also plans to upgrade the monitor to a high refresh rate panel in the near future, so I suggest the MSI GTX 1060 Armor OC 6G. That'll fit our budget nicely and it'll provide the frame rates needed. That leaves us with around $150 Aussie to play with, and with that I was thinking maybe we could get another 8GB of memory or perhaps even a bigger SSD. However, Jaden has requested, if possible, could we throw in the Fractal Design Define C. I thought the case he had was pretty good, but he doesn't like the cable management and he wants something with better cooling and easy to clean dust filters. So per his request, I suggest we throw on the Define C, the Tempered Glass Edition. Now, if you win Jaden, I expect to see a very smart looking system build indeed. All right, guys, there's five Core i5 PCs all in need of various upgrades. It's now your job to let us know which one you think is most deserving of receiving our proposed upgrade package. To cast your vote, please follow the link in the video description. That'll head you over to the TechSpot forums. By signing up for the forums, commenting, and all that good stuff, you do go on the running to win some cool prizes, and they are global giveaways. We'll ship them anywhere. Speaking of which, the winner from last week's episode is Ed Samuels. Congratulations, mate. You have an awesome Ryzen 5 1600 processor from AMD coming your way. Big thanks to AMD for providing that amazing prize. And remember, guys, vote, comment, and do that stuff every week because we do have more prizes coming. There's a few more Ryzen 5 and maybe even some Ryzen 7 CPUs to give away later in the series. Finally, voting will be open till Friday night in the US, and that's Saturday Arvo here in Australia. And then, of course, we will announce the winner from this episode at the start of next week's episode. And at that point, we will have another five PCs to check out and do it all over again. I'm your host, Steve. Go get voting. <laughs>